Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are good. This is Patrick Kegon, the channel is Threatic Patrick Kegon. Welcome aboard. Uh, today we are going to do a financial lesson. This is 10 financial lessons to make you wealthy. Feel uh, at home. Let us learn together so that you can create wealth. You retire well, you enjoy your sunset years well, as well as your youthful years because wealth is good. Feel welcome, learn, enjoy, and in case you have not subscribed to our channel, kindly do so. Thank you so much. So remember to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, you like, and you share together so uh, this is our first slide let us study what is wealth and generally how do you want to study this particular section so we have a classification at, at the center we have wealth then surrounding wealth we have earnings we have savings we have spending and then we have investment so this will be the focus of our study today you want to understand from your earnings what are you needed so that you can be able to multiply the earnings and create wealth what are you needed to do in your savings culture what is needed for you when it comes to spending and what is needed when it comes to investment so let's go on lesson one we have to open with style and it says noble men regard their intellectual as well as their material wealth as an entrusted possession. This is a quote by Maria Vaughan. So uh, the first thing you need to understand is that up to now you have actually worked for this. You have actually invested a lot of time and energy and money. So in all uh, in some other discussions we have made, we talked about the term factors. That is the time energy and money so for anything you love you have to spend the three things that is time energy and money so for you to have that intellectual prowess for you to be able to be researching even this material it means you have some intellect it means you have some knowledge about the need to be wealthy so you need to understand that whatever you have been able to invest while you have been learning you have been growing you need to take it serious because this is whatever you are going to use to earn and when you earn that is when you have the capacity to grow your wealth you need to take this seriously and take it as an entrusted position so that you can take good care of it and make it grow and guard against losing that particular thing so we start from earnings and the first thing we talk about is earning is learning the difference between the two is only l letter l and that is why the second quote earning is a product of learning you're only one better you're only one letter away from earning more the more you learn the better you earn the more you equip yourself so you need to translate each day to be a day you are learning something new you are learning a skill let us look at the takeaway you need to be building yourself you need to be empowering your skills you need to be empowering your knowledge base your wealth your knowledge of wealth your networks so that you can be able to enlarge your earning base when you talk about diversity of portfolio you can't talk about diversity of portfolio if you don't actually understand what is a portfolio? What is diversity? Which fields do you want to study in? So, step number one, you need to understand the more you learn, the better is your earnings. This first quote says, you don't get what you want, you get what you deserve. If you are in unemployment, for example, it's what you actually deserve that is what you are given. So you need to fight for what you deserve. 
don't sit down and say i just want this work because from the skills from the aptitude from the output you can actually equate to whatever you will earn so you don't get what you want you get what you deserve that is by frank our second slide will be earnings but in this case we are talking about time management one of the three theme factors we discussed was tem that is time energy and money so you need to know time management is an important part of your earning phase because you have 24 hours the first thing you need to ask yourself is how am i using these 24 hours in whatever time you are investing if you, if you are investing one hour what rate are you getting for this one hour what rate are you getting for these two hours is it matching to what you should be getting is it matching to what you really deserve for that particular service you are doing is it matching for the particular output of goods you are doing so you need to understand the principle of managing your time such that you have value for your time don't take things which will make you undervalue yourself try to get opportunities which will make you have an equal value for the time you are dispensing benjamin franklin that is the, the the greatest founder says that remember that time is money the second quote is you only have so many hours in a day let others make the money for you and the third quote is that your greatest asset is your earning ability your greatest resource is your time this is important because i've reflected something on the takeaway that is time money time arbitrage time money time arbitrage is a principle i've been uh, discussing with very many people what does this mean it means when you are growing you are going to use your time that is your expending your eight hours or you're expending your two hours to get money but as you grow your financial muscle you now need to use your money to have other people's time to be your resources what do we mean by this let's do an example we have stated that alone you have 24 hours but if you have a team of 10 people working for you or working on the same project it means you'll be having 240 man hours so in an eight hour day assume or take that you have 10 people that means you'll be having eight man hours that is a multiplication to your earnings and that is how businesses work we spend our money to get people to work for the business so that we can have whatever their output will take the profit from their time spending do not be a slave this is the first principle when it comes to spending some of us spend even before they earn somebody knows that they'll be earning in the next two years or in the next two weeks i'm sorry and uh, they start spending <laughs> even before they earn that particular dime so it's quite important for you to understand that you need to manage your spending you may not be having a money problem you may not be having an earning problem but you are having a spending problem so the first quote says you will reach your full earning potential only when you get control of your current income some of us by the time you are earning that income it's already gone because already you have some debt you are financing already you have 10 or 20 people waiting for this particular income or you want to earn the first day you want to show people as i shown in the second quote that spending money to show people how much money you have is the fastest way to have less money so you want the, your first spending during the weekend during that uh, weekend out just after hand month you spend a fourth while you spend everything then after three or four days you are out there saying you don't have money it's because you don't have an earning problem but you have what is called a spending problem a person who cannot control their desires will be a captive of them study your habits for desires have been known to grow so long as there's space to the space to satisfy them this is wisdom from the rich man the richest man in babylon so be keen on your desires be keen on your ambition because the more you satisfy them the more they'll come around so lesson five we are talking about budgeting your finances 
Debt is a problem. A debt problem is, at its core, a budgeting problem. Some of us are into 50, 60, and uh, percent extra of our, of, our, of our earnings. And most of it is in bad debt because we have missed on the fundamental tool to manage finance, and that is budgeting. Be aware of small expenses. A small leak will sink a great ship. I want you to take this challenge today. Record all your expenditure. Look at the small things. Look at those small items you are using 1,000 shillings, you are using $10. Look at them. If you are doing $10 for a very small, uh, let's say a small expenditure, but you are doing eight or eight of them in a day, it means you are spending $80. That means you are doing 8,000 wasteful and you are not going to be able to track this. So budget your money. Before you set in, before you receive the money, have a budget. Some of us say we want to do budgets after this, after earning the money. That can be tough. If I were you, have a budget first before you have that money in. Creating a budget takes you to, into control, keeping you uh, to, to be in account and to enable you to plan your spending. Lack of planning, they say, is planning to fail. So with a budget, you can skillfully control how your money flows. You can actually say this money wants to go to this one, two, three, four. That is the only way you see other people are growing. Some of us are not growing. Let us roll into the second portion of this. This is savings. And we say kick in the culture. Pay yourself first. If you read uh, the richest man in Babylon, it says that from thy earnings, 10% should be your first pay. And it says pay yourself first. The principle is spend what remains from saving. Don't do the other way around. If you want to save what remains from spending, <laughs> you may miss everything. So kick in the culture. The, 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 the difficult part is starting out. You need to start. You need to do that 5,000. You need to do 500 so that you have the motion in it. So the wise man saves for the future, but the foolish man spends whatever he gets. This is a very good discussion in Proverbs 21:20. It shows how the wise man, uh, if you read the oil, the, 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 the analogy of oil, how the wise man will, will, will cater for his household, will be having in excess, but the foolish will spend everything and lack. Do not save what is left after spending. We have talked about that. Personal finance is only 20%. Air knowledge, it's 80% behavior. How you control yourself, how you maneuver around, that matters a lot. So the key takeaway there is establish the financial discipline of saving, automate your savings culture, and importantly, save before spending. A dime saved today is what can be multiplied tomorrow. That's very important. So let's go. Savings again. We are talking about let your savings multiply. So a savings account may not be the best method to grow. But this is the assurance that you are having a basement. You are having somewhere you are going to start from. For example, if you are saving in a circle, it means you have a dispensation or you have a, a security which can enable you to take loans. If you want to take loan against your, your savings, for some circles, you can take 80%. It means you have an emergency fund you can be able to fall back to. So. Two accounts. You have savings account, you have the investment account. But let us talk about savings. I want you to take programs, saving programs, which will help your money to grow. Look at the savings account you are investing in to also to make sure that whatever the account your money is doesn't just lie. Remember the inflation is coming up each day, each month. So ensure that the money you are saving is in good place and it can be able to multiply. If compounding interest is indeed the eighth wonder of the world, then leverage compounding is certainly the ninth, tenth, and eleventh wonder. 
So if somebody is starting out, let's say at 18 years today, saving 2,500 Kenya shillings, that is about $25, and you save it for the next 50 or so years, you'll be talking about having 18 to 20 million Kenya shillings. So think about that. Start that savings culture, but check the accounts which could help you to multiply faster. So we are talking about lesson eight. This is investment. That is creating your portfolio. Opportunities come infrequently. When it rains gold, put out the bucket, not the thimble. This is a saying by Warren Buffett. This is an investment guru. So this is a call to you that from the past, from the money you have been able to accumulate in your earnings and in your savings, you need to take up the opportunities so that you can maximize and grow. So depending on whatever likes, uh, this is the takeaway, depending on what you are interested in, what your investment knowledge is based on, and your risk appetite or your risk tolerance, you need to create various investment portfolios if you are serious about growing your money so as to expand your capital base. This is important because it's not enough for you to have the money in your savings account. You need them to multiply, you need them to grow. So you need to have different asset bases depending on what you want to, to invest in. Some of us buy stocks, some of us buy cows, some of us invest in businesses, some of us uh, do different things. We buy shares, some of us will do MMFs, and all the investment portfolios you have. But remember to diversify your portfolio and learn each day so that there are some passive incomes from this portfolio. There are some active. You have to involve yourself in a business, but ensure you are creating a wider range of portfolio depending on your risk tolerance so that you also need to know that you need to take care of your money so that you don't lose your treasure. Let's talk about investment that is being prudent and patient. So some of us have a lot of money in the account, but because we don't take the due diligence, we invest all of it to wash wash. We normally call them wash wash, or we can call them the, the wasted advice. Somebody comes in, they give you wrong advice and you waste all your money. Investment needs patience. Investments need you to invest in your knowledge. Investment needs you to go and ask the right advice. I want you to read about uh, the, the richest man in Babylon. It says that, why should you go and ask somebody who is not an expert in that particular field on how to do a particular thing? For example, how can you go and ask a doctor on matters of engineers? It doesn't make sense. So you need to ask the right questions to the right people. And finally, on the parting shot, never stop learning. We started by saying that whatever you learn, whatever you learn today can be translated to your earnings because you are one letter away from earning more. So formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. This is by Jim Rohn. Being educated in class, being a master of engineering, being a master in a, doc, uh, a doctor and all that, that is the formal education you needed for you to earn a living. But out here, you need now to go down and study. You need to sit down and have a technical discussion with people who really understand about investments. You need to sit down and study things. The good thing nowadays, you can talk about YouTube engineering, YouTube uh, university. You can talk about social media. There's some people out there who are writing some very good content. So think about it and uh, master yourself so that you can grow. If your financial intelligence is low, money will run all over you. It will be smarter than you. If money is smarter than you, you will work for it all your life. To be the master of money, you need to be the smarter than that. Then money will do as it is told. It will obey you. Instead of being a slave to it, you'll be the master of it. That is Financial Intelligence by Robert Kiyosaki. This is one of my favorites. So key takeaway here is never stop learning. Be a lifelong learner. Empower yourself daily. Have a team to guide you daily. Have a reading class daily because that is how 
you are going to master and grow your network and learn so that you can expand your base and you can expand your financial knowledge and financial intelligence because that is the key to growing your wealth and protecting your wealth. So that has been it. I hope uh, you enjoyed yourself. In case you need more content on this, kindly subscribe and let's support the network. Thank you so much.